So for any of you out there who have a pet, a, a dog, a cat, whatever, you know when you are trying to get them to focus on something, but they're really focusing on something else that you don't want them to maybe because, you know, you want to take a picture of them or whatever. And you're trying to get their attention, but they're not focusing. So what do you do? You know, you grab something, you, maybe your car keys or something, and you jangle them, right? So they get your attention. That, or so you get their attention. Sorry, that is exactly what's happening in this case here with the government and the media trying to suppress what, uh, what's occurring. Now, before I start, I just want to quickly say that I really don't enjoy covering the underground base topic just because it's been covered so much. But the reason why I decided to go ahead with this episode is because the amount of connections that have been made here, whether it's funding, whether it's different types of spacecraft or alien material that we're going to talk about shortly, or how certain quantum technology in these underground bases connects to uh, deep underground military bases and the Akashic records, I decided to do this. Now, before I go on, I just want to very, very quickly give a shout out to Jeff N. Brother, thank you so much for watching the show. As well as CJ. CJ, thank you so much. And again, I will get to all of you guys shortly. I know that there's a long list of shout outs and I'm getting to you guys. As well as Alice Marie's Wonderland. Uh, completely natural products, skincare products, all that. I did shout her out about a week or two ago. I just wanted to remind you guys just because for women out there, she's got some really great stuff. So let's get into it. Level 6 Nightmare Hall. The mission to purge the Dolce base from hell. Okay, so... We need to understand a few different things here before we jump into the actual aspect of what occurred here and all the different connections that I've made. First off, what does hell stand for? Hell stands for high level. Now, bear with me. Echoliobion, which stands for it's, it's, it's a big word for incubator. OK, pretty much what they put the aliens in. Lability, which means vulnerable to some type of genetic breakdown or something of the sort, LASIS, which means network. So you see how they use these big words already to confuse us as to what's going on and things like this with these acronyms to try to sort of deceive us in many ways so that we don't look in a certain direction. The same example I gave of the keys jangling. So we know what hell stands for. The next thing we have to look at, if we take a look here, is what Skunk Works is. All right. So according to Wikipedia, Skunk Works is an official pseudonym for Lockheed Martin's Advanced Development Programs, ADP, formerly called Lockheed Advanced Development Projects. It's responsible for a number of aircraft designs. Uh, end quote. It goes on to explain all the things they're doing and all that. But long story short, Skunk Works is part of the ultimate disk theory. Now, what is the disk theory? The disk theory is something proposed by uh, a physicist, actually, by the name of Eric Weinstein. So disk theory stands for distributed idea suppression complex. Long story short, his proposal, which I really like, is that it's not necessarily a conspiratorial proposal. But what this discusses is the fact that within the major academic communities and institutions, excuse me, there is an overall loose set of committees of people that shoot down ideas that are f when someone speaks too freely or thinks too freely. Not only do they shut down ideas that people have, because technically speaking in the academic community, the best ideas are supposed to win. But that's not the case here. Because if the best ideas are supposed to win, technically speaking, you start getting into technology that's considered classified. So the people in these loosely assembled committees are responsible for shutting down these ideas and saying, no, it doesn't work. That's why I have great respect for scientists who work on a public level. But at the same time, I'm skeptical because they're not filled in and given access to all of the information that is had here. Now, the idea is it's not that it's some shadow group, this disc theory, but it's a loose group of people who understand that there's a limit. Once you cross a certain line in a scientific and mathematical way of thinking and engineering as well you get into classified levels of things that you know ironically nikola tesla spoke about when he told his friend to uh, shut down uh, and and hide uh, the universe one but the universal one book excuse me for a thousand years because humanity wasn't ready that's an idea of how the disc theory works now i know that's a bit confusing but just bear with me very quickly so skunk works on the official lockheed martin website if we take a look here i'm not gonna lie at least they don't bullshit us completely, Part of my English. They talk here about how 80% of their work is classified. So at the end of the day, we know what's really going on here. Now, the former CEO of the Skunk Works division, or the former head, 
who passed away in the 90s, said that we have all the means to travel through the stars, but it'll never become public. And for those on YouTube, I'm putting the quote up right now because they're locked up in black budget projects. Now, let's get into the best part of all of this. The Dolce Base. Everyone knows about the Dolce Base. If you guys followed me on the show for a while, you know Phil Schneider, uh, Al Bilek, all these guys. Now, I want to talk about someone much more significant than Phil Schneider, arguably in many regards, and that is Thomas Costello. Why do I bring this up? So let's take a look here according to... BahiaStudies.net, and I quote, Thomas Edwin Costello claimed to be a former security technician employed by the Rand Corporation, and this is the part that people miss, guys, at the Dolce Underground Facilities. He is responsible... He was a sergeant sta uh, stationed at the Nellis Air Force Base in 1961, but he was essentially responsible for assembling the security cameras and guiding certain people to their classified levels of the base where they needed to be. Now, here's the interesting thing, end quote. The interesting thing about this is that when they use the TBS machine, which is the machine to dig tunnels, Phil Schneider was called in by Thomas Costello to come take a look as to why a certain machine uh, to build an underground military base near Dolce was actually stuck. That was because there was already an underground alien base there, and everybody knows this. You know, Phil Schneider, he shot at the aliens, the aliens shot back, he ended up going up, and then a SEAL team went in to take care of the job. Now, here's what's interesting. The SEAL team that went in to take care of the job committed suicide. All of the members committed suicide in addition to 66 Secret Service agents that committed suicide along with Phil Schneider all within the same week of 1997. So the CIA was covering this up. This is part of the disc theory I was talking about. And on top of all this, the Rand Corporation, by the way, is directly connected to every major backing and funding that has to do with space programs. Now, let's take a look at the Rand Corporation very quickly. And I quote, this is according to their official website. The Rand Corporation is a research organization that develops sections to... A solution, sorry, to public policy challenges to help make communities throughout the world safer and more secure, healthier and more prosperous, end quote. Basically, a really fancy way of saying, we're not telling you jack shit about what we do. We're a nonprofit organization. We're exempt from filing taxes and things like this, which pretty much means if we don't file taxes, we don't have to disclose a lot of the things we do. Because again, you don't, how do you pay taxes? You have to show what you're purchasing and things like this, right? They're exempt from a lot of that. First off, the next thing is that if we take a look at the Rand Corporation, we're also going to realize that the Rand Corporation funds the Salk Institute for Biological Studies, which is the same company located in California that sanctioned a license numbered corporation for the Carrot Project, Project Carrot, back in 1987, which is the document that for those who have watched the show, even uh, if you just discovered the show in the last couple weeks, you'll know exactly what I'm talking about when I say Project Carrot. Interesting right? How all of this is deeply connected. Now it goes even deeper than that. So if we take a look at what the Salk Institute recently reported, what we're going to see here is that if we look at fizz.org, and I quote, but this is reported all over the mainstream media, by the way, not bot, not beast. Scientists create first ever living programmable organism. So if we take a look at this, here's what we're going to see. The bots are living, but they're not living. They live for a certain amount of time, and then they die, and then they live again. Where is this technology coming from exactly? The Dolce base. Why do I say this? It is no coincidence that the funding of the Rand Corporation is a network that branches off, which also connects to, by the way, Battelle Corporation, which Jacques Vallée also spoke about on the Joe Rogan podcast, where he talks about how mysterious metals at the Battelle Corporation suddenly go missing from the public sector of the company. All right, that end up going into the private sector of it. How do you keep things secret? The U.S. military and the government, specifically the CIA and the ones that are sort of a shadow CIA group, if you will, they understand, guys, that ultimately, at the end of the day, what happens here is that you can only trust your soldiers and your secret servicemen to be quiet for so long. If you want things to work long term, you have to sanction these things out to private corporations. And that's exactly what happened here. Now, here's what's also interesting. Thomas Costello believe it or not, worked for a project under the name, excuse me, under the name of MK Rand. MK Rand was also a subset of MK Ultra, and I have the documents to prove it, and I'm putting them up on the screen for you guys right now. So if we take a look here, the Nightmare Hall, all right, so, and I quote, the Dolce base is an alleged joint human and alien underground facility under the Arcatura Mesta on the Colorado New Mexico border near a small town in Dolce, New Mexico. Claims of alien activity there arose from businessmen 
Paul Benowitz, who had the nearby Kirtland Air Force Base, or sorry, who had ties with the nearby Kirtland Air Force Base and Sandia Labs in Albuquerque, end quote. Long story short, okay, the Dolce base connects to a cave of underground tunnels that use something called time crystals. And this is where it's going to get even more interesting. Time crystals allow for quantum computation and quantum memory to occur. Now, what's the closest thing we have to time crystals or something like this that one could define in a spiritual sense? Because we want to bring this full circle here, by the way. The Akashic Records. Think about it. It's just a different way of perceiving it. This goes back to what I've been talking about when it comes to perception and the way that we view things. I spoke about this a couple of weeks ago, right? Now, the next thing we also have to look at is that there's a witness co-named Mr. D who has appeared on many different shows over the years, but then suddenly went quiet because he was afraid to talk. Mr. D was allegedly a Navy SEAL that both was on the team that took down the giant in Kandahar, which had the same cave that they found the giant in that had time crystals that ironically matched the quantum frequency and the frequential brains of that of the Dolce base. Ironically, I, I can't, I, I have trouble making that particular connection as to what the quantum frequencies intersect with one another mean, but there is something there. That's for sure that these are not coincidences by any stretch of the imagination. But anyways, Mr. D is a code name. So he took he was one of the soldiers that took down the giants in Kandahar. On top of all that, he was also one of the soldiers back in the 80s, the, the, the mid to late 80s, who went down after Phil Schneider went back up from the issue because they realized jesus christ there's aliens living under here no wonder our tbm machine that tunnels through to make these bases has suddenly stopped because the material of the base of these aliens is so vastly stronger because it uses the same titanium alloys that are used on their ufo craft and obviously at the time they weren't aware of this right and so ultimately what we have to look at here is we have to look at all the angles whether it's the financial sector of it the the possibility of the disc theory the skunk works corporation all of this is interconnected in a very deep way now let's take a look at this for example Four kilometers deep, and this is according to the document, and I quote, a horrible discovery was made. It became immediately apparent that they had broken through into a large cavern that was infested with aliens. The creatures were described as type one, seven foot tall greys. Startled and fearing for his own life, Schneider was able to kill one of the creatures, but was hit by what he described as a light green cobalt radiation beam that was fired by one of the aliens, end quote. Now, first off, before I go on, let's take a look. He was shot with a pen-like beam. Does that not remind you of the pen-like beams that Geraldo Rivero, uh, Rivera reported on about 20 years ago, talking about Nordic encounters in the southern parts of the United States? It, it, do you guys not see that connection? I'm sure you do. Let's move on. Let's take a look here. Phil was placed in the elevator, oh, badly injured and burned, but still alive. Phil was placed in the elevator basket and began the long trip to the surface. As other armed men came down, an intense firefight continued to range in the cavern, uh, rage in the cavern below. In the commotion, a total of 66 secret agents along with, okay, end quote. So long story short. One of the men that went down there was this Mr. D, this codenamed gentleman, okay? So that's just the, that's the proof right there. Now, with all that being said, we also have to understand where this technology comes from, what it means, and all that. So if we take a look at the fizz.org article, we're going to see that there's major ethical uh, complaints about excuse me, about certain things that are occurring there uh, within the technology of the Xenobots. But we also have to understand this is a simple form of drop feeding through the disk theory, the distributive idea suppression complex theory. It's come to a point now where certain people on certain committees that have access to this type of information say, okay, it's time for us to slowly reveal this technology to the public. Now, if we take a look at the Dolce papers, which I'm putting up on the screen for those on YouTube right now, we're going to see drawings of this of Thomas Costello's reports that match identically with Mr. D's reports, the code name, the guy who doesn't want to be named for many reasons. Obviously, he doesn't want to get quote unquote suicided, right? And if we take a look here, the descriptions of the aliens that were put inside these incubators, which are which are the hells, by the way, the uh, high level echoliobian liability laces, we're going to see the drawings and descriptions of both these gentlemen match specifically. So why would these gentlemen who want to come out and speak out 
have matching stories when they've never met each other. Now, yes, granted, they've both both worked for, you know, contractors and things that I'm sure intersected in different projects. Ultimately, they were under the Skunk Works umbrella. I mean, Thomas Costello was in MK Rand, which was a subset of MK Ultra, which was part of the Skunk Works division. But at the same time, we also have to understand that th this Mr. D was not an intelligence officer of any kind. He was a soldier. He was given orders and he executed them, whether it was in Kandahar or what have you. Now, what's interesting is that Mr. D claimed that he can recall these memories vividly because when you come in contact with the time crystals it utilizes your third eye in the pineal gland of everything which allows for you to access a form of viewing the akashic records not all of the akashic rec records but just enough to understand that it's very similar to that of the concept of project looking glass so i want you guys to let me, let me know what you think i know i was a little little bit all over the place excuse me it's just when I get so excited, this is exactly what happens. I start to uh, stumble and, 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 and all that. But anyways, I hope you guys enjoyed the episode. I hope um, you guys let me know in the comments what you think. What Again, I tried to cover all the bases here. The financial connections. Okay, the actual connections of the people being made, whether it's, you know, militarily or through different contractors, things like this. And the tech technological drop feeding that only subscribes to Mr. Weinstein's disc theory. OK, and so ultimately we see here that it's not like there's some massive conspiracy going on, because, again, at the end of the day, I don't care what you are, human, alien, what have you in a conspiracy or a, what we define to be a conspiracy. You can't cover things up for so long with so many people in on it. So you drop feed and compartmentalize the information. And that's what the disc theory is. So certain committees are privy to certain information. And then they're told by their higher ups, listen, don't let this go through on a public funding level or something like this because it's too classified and sensitive. So let me know what you guys think and we'll catch you guys tomorrow. Cheers.